Coach, it's been a hard week for the NFL and its community after what happened Monday night with Buffalo Bills safety, DeMar Hamlin. You've been on that field. You've had cards come on your field many times to take players off your, off your field. What's it like as a, as a leader of men when a moment like that occurs? Well, the ones that I've been through, are, they're so sad because of how, how hard guys work, their careers, what's on the line, just not just a sport and job that they love, but supporting their family, having the chance to support, um, to get some generational wealth where they can take care of their kids and stuff like that. And you watch some of those dreams end on the field and they're really tough to watch and be a part of and everyone knows it. And it's really tough to go back to the game after. One thing I've never been a part of or seen or ever and considered a possibility is the fact of watching someone die on the field. And that's kind of just, that's something we none of us think about. And I haven't been in that situation and no one on those two teams had until they saw that. And you didn't really realize that until you saw their faces. And when you saw their faces, you realize something's different than usual. You see guys' faces when someone tears their knee up or, um, you know, or there's been worries of people being paralyzed, which is, as, I thought, as bad as it could be. Um, but when you see where people think someone died, um, there, that's never been a part of what you sign up for. And I think uh, that's what was so scary about the situation um, and just so good and so relieving to hear the good news that we got later in this week and that he's got a chance to come back from this. It is the scariest sight, I think, in all sport when that car or ambulance comes on the field to take off a player. Uh, you've had it happen to you, your, your home opener. One quarterback gets taken off the field. Later, Jimmy Garoppolo gets taken off the field. Um, November the 14th, and I'm not going to equate this to what happened to DeMar Hamlin, but when that card came out to take off Debo Samuel and you saw his emotion, you saw Trent Williams' emotion when he tried to stand up and walk off and he couldn't, we didn't think he was going to play the rest of the year, Coach. We thought it was a bad knee injury, and he's got something with the knee and the ankle. So going back to that time, can you believe at some point here, maybe this game, you're going to get this guy back? Um, I mean, not from that moment. I mean, just watching how – bad the injury looked um seeing his demeanor after it knowing he went in uh it was tough and you just you got to go back and finish the game but you know when you get in that locker room you're just preparing for some bad news and i remember getting in there and them telling uh, me that there's a chance it might not be as bad as it seemed but they got to get some images on it and stuff and I remember Debo FaceTiming me from Benihana's later that night. Benihana's? Uh, from Benihana's. Uh, that's, I think that's his spot a lot <laughs> on Sunday nights. Um, wow. And I remember right then realizing, just seeing his face and stuff on it, like, all right, we got a chance for this not to be as bad as it seemed. And then um, when we got the news back that Monday or Tuesday, it was accurate. And he's had a hell of a week of practice and can't wait to get him back with us. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, MCL we'll have to deal with in the ankle. But uh, Elijah Mitchell's had two different MCLs and different sides of the body and different severity. So it'd be nice to get all these weapons back. Are you hopeful Elijah is going to be able to contribute here? Uh, yes, I am. I mean, those two guys, they were as important as anybody we had on a run last year. Uh, what those guys did at the end of the year, what those two did in the playoffs, the way they ran the ball together and some of the plays they've made, um, adding those guys back to this group that's been playing well for the last five weeks or so um, just makes us that much deeper, that much stronger. And um, I know it pumps our fans up and it definitely pumps our team and up. And as a play caller, you got to like the options with CMC and – and Debo and Eli, you got some weapons in there. Oh, the play all over the place. Yeah, it's a hell of a deal. It's, it's hard to call a bad play. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, well, we'll see about that. Well, no, you... I, I promise you I will, but they can save me a lot. Yeah, he, uh -huh. uh, he seems to be getting healthier at the right time, but injuries always crop up. And in the Raider game last week, he had a couple of uh, ones that are concerning. Left guard Aaron Banks, who's had a tremendous second year in the NFL, first full year as a starter, goes down with, with a knee injury and an ankle. Are you hopeful you'll get him back sometime in January, Coach? Yeah, I am hopeful. Um, he's been he's been walking around pretty good and stuff just throughout the building. Uh, we'll see next week, you know, the first round, the wild card round. But um, if, if we don't get him then, hopefully we take care of business and we can get him the next week. Um, I know it'll be close there, but he's done a hell of a job for us this year. The cool thing about when you lose such a good player like that is – it's nice when his backup has the experience that our guy does. So um, Dan, we mix in there anyways, and Dan's been a part of a lot of this stuff. So I know I know he'll hold down the fort for us while um, while Banks is out, and hopefully he'll get back as soon as possible. Dan Brunskill, who has been mixing in at right guard with Spencer Burford, is that hard to do in the middle of a game? Just jump in. I know the hand placement, the footwork is different. I spoke to him after the game, and he thought it was a little harder than people think. He's incredible. He can play anywhere on the O line for you, from right tackle to left tackle but and, and center, 
But to go from right guard to left guard in the middle of a game, that's no, challenging. It, yeah, it's very hard. I mean, especially what you get used to. I mean, if you're stepping with a certain foot all the time and punching with a certain hand and then you got to flip it, I mean, it, it takes a while to get comfortable, uh, especially at this level when you're going against some elite players. Uh, it does help. You know, Dan does it as good as anyone. It doesn't mean it's easy for him. It's tough for him, but he does it as well as any player I've been around. That's why we played him at all five spots. And, um, He's kind of our Swiss Army knife. Wherever we need him, there was at times that we didn't know if he could do all that. Um, but I want to put anything past Dan. Anything we've ever thought he can't do, uh, just give him a, about a week, and he figures it out, and he does it at a very good level. And then over on the defensive side, the injury involved Dre Greenlaw with, with a back injury. And you were outspoken when the Pro Bowl teams came out that Greenlaw was not included, just a complete omission. Uh, but he wants to play another bowl, the Super Bowl. So. With the back injury, are you hopeful you'll get him back in some point in the playoffs? Uh, yeah, I am. You know, I, I, he won't be in this week, um, but very similar to Banks. I think it's a similar situation. It looks scary. We're worried about it. I do think we'll be close, most likely able to get him the wild card weekend. And if not, I would for sure think the next weekend if we can handle our business. But in, just like in Banks' situation, uh, the guy behind him um, is a real good player. And Aziz got to play a ton for us last year. We know we always have all three of them out there in base. But now if we go nickel, I know Aziz has been chomping at the bit all year. He wants to be out there, and this will be an opportunity for him to be out there this game a lot more. And, I mean, I think Aziz is a Pro Bowl linebacker too. He just hasn't been able to get out there because we've got two really good ones. And he'll get a play this week, and hopefully he'll hold it down, and Dre will be back sooner than later. The Raider game on New Year's Day in Vegas was exciting, maybe too exciting from your perspective. But we know how, how good they are and their weapons. But that didn't look like your defense. It, you have to go back to the Chiefs game. The last time we saw that nine explosive plays, 29 first downs, 500 yards of offense they 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 generated and, and they scored 34 points on you. Um, there have been busts even during the earlier games during the, the winning streak. So how do you assess where your defense is at right now, Coach? No, uh, I mean we were concerned going into the game. We knew they had a chance to um, be a pretty tough team to stop. I mean they had been on tape most of the year, you know, with only one game their entire year didn't come down to the last possession for them. So. I kind of compared them all week to the Vikings, um, a team who had been in one possession games a ton, um, but the ball bounced the right away, and that was their record. And the Raiders were kind of in the opposite deal. So when we went into that game, we knew we had our work cut out for us. Um, I thought it was a little tough that first drive. We got them into a short yardage. We didn't bust. We just bit on the play action. Mm -hmm. And that really got an open corner versus cover two, which you shouldn't get, and got them an easy one. And then there was about three plays, three scrambles, to where I think two of them were on third down, one was on second down, where we got a chance to get them off the field. And I think our gap securities with our pass rushing lanes weren't very good. We were going way too up the field, just trying to get sacks. And the quarterback had the ability to get a clean lane. And we gave him two easy first downs, which added a three full drives that they got seven points on. So we got to get guys off the field, can't give them second chances like that. And when you have players like they do, I mean, Devontae Adams is as good as it gets, Waller is, and so is Renfro, um, and so is their running back. Um, so when you got four guys like that and their quarterbacks playing at that level, I think we made them way too comfortable early, and then their skills kind of took over. And uh, so we got to do this week. We got another quarterback who hasn't played a lot of games, and we can't let him get comfortable because I feel if we don't let quarterbacks get comfortable, um, then it's a problem for him. Yeah, the Raiders played QB2 in Jared Stidham last week. Arizona's playing QB4. Kyler Murray, Colt McCoy, Colt McCoy, Trace McSorley. I don't know much about David Blau. I remember him in Detroit. What's the scouting report on the quarterback you're going to face in this game? Um, I mean, I think he's helped him. I mean, just watching him last week, he did some good things. You know, I got not real familiar with him, but I got to see him when he played in Detroit for a few games. And I thought he was always a good player, very consistent thrower, usually gets the ball to the right spot. And uh, I can see why they're going with him. I, it sounds like Cliff's excited when you hear him talk about him and just watching the game and watching him play, I can see why. I think he can run their offense. He can get the ball in the right spots. And they got some fast receivers, some guys who can take it to the house when you only throw them a screen or a little slant. And um, I think he's going to do that, distribute the ball. So we got to make sure that we close those windows, windows and make sure we tackle a little bit better than we did last week because if we don't and we keep letting them be out there, eventually these guys get some big ones. This game is going to be the final game of a clear first ballot Hall of Fame career for the great J.J. Watt. There have only been three three-time NFL Defensive Players of the Year. He's won along with LT and another number 99. Aaron Donald, you've had to deal with in your division, but this guy's different because he plays all over the defensive line. When I tell you J.J. Watt, I say that name. What do you think of? As good of a player as I've ever gone against. I mean, there's only a handful of guys where it's, you know, when you played against them, that 
what an NFL defensive MVP is like. And um, Aaron Donald's definitely one of those, and so is JJ. Um, I said a few others, and I have gone against James Harrison and his MVP year, which I thought was right up there. Those are like the guys that I can really remember when you played them, whatever year that was. And it was like, holy cow, there's not one play that I'm not worried about this guy on. And you got to totally design your whole game plan around it, or they'll completely wreck it. And JJ was always a problem with that. I mean, just playing in a 3 4 defense where he was usually a five technique, and, you know, they always had a pretty big stand up backer outside of them. And I always found that really hard to help because you put the tight end to help the tackle on him, and now you have a halfback on a little outside of him, mm -hmm. and it, it always changed things. And the way he, what he could do in the run game, how he could go back door, which when people go back door in the run game, you can make them pay. It was very hard to make him pay. He'd go back door and still make the play, and that's what scared you of bootlegs and everything also. And not to mention, whenever you feel you did have him blocked, which was probably two or three people on him, he seemed to tip it every time. Um, so he was, he's was he been a pain for a long time. I think he still is. Um, I'm very happy he's retired. Congratulations to you. You got your second NFC West championship in, in the last four years. The significance to this, you've, you've won the division. But if you beat the Arizona Cardinals in this game, Coach, you would have swept the division. The 49ers have not done that going back to the 90s. How significant? Arizona's been a hard time team for you to beat. Seattle, the Rams here and there. But how significant would that be for your team to go 6-0 and against the NFC West? Um, that would be, I mean, that would be really cool. I mean, our first goal is to get in the playoffs and our best way of doing that is always winning our division. So that's something we talk about a ton at the beginning of the year. Um, haven't talked about that a little bit lately cause we won it, you know, a month ago, but, um, I'm wearing the hat today. Though. I like it. It's nice. But right now we're only thinking about one thing. Yeah, I know. So like that doesn't excite us that much. Um, I want to make sure we win this week cause I'm hoping we get the one seed, but if we don't, I want to make sure we're the two and don't go back to that three seed. So right now we're doing everything we can to position us for the ultimate goal. And, um, when you have time, you can sit back and reflect. That is a cool thing. You know, when you say go back to the nineties and things like that, um, and the teams they've had here and some of the teams they've gone against in the West, yeah, we'll, we'll be real proud of that. But you know, that's, that's not on our mind right now. We got one thing on our mind and, uh, I think that's like 38 days away or something like that. So we're making sure we take care of business this week and get ready for these playoffs. If you win this game on Sunday, you're going to have a 10 game winning streak. And you've had a couple of long winning streaks since you've been the coach of the 49ers, different situations. 2017, you're one in 10 to get Jimmy Garoppolo and you win the last five, but you don't go to the playoffs. In 2019, you start eight and oh, and then you go all the way to the Super Bowl. This year, you're three and four, and you've won nine in a row, hopefully make it 10. How do you look at these, these long winning streaks that your, your teams have been able to go on and compare them from 17, 19, and this year? Um, I think, you know, when we started 8-0, that, that's the one that seemed the longest because we hadn't lost. And you just start out that year, and you're like, man, how's this team going to handle a loss? And we went into that year, and we hadn't won before. Uh, so that was the one that really stuck out to my mind and was different. Uh, this year, you know, we're three and four. We feel we have a really good team, but our record's not showing it. And we're taking it one game at a time and not really thinking about it. And before you know it, we've won so many games in a row, win the division. And that's when it kind of starts to hit like, man, when did we lose last? Um, but it doesn't feel like we're on that long of a stretch because we have been through turmoil this year. Not turmoil, we've been through adversity. Um, we, there have been times where people counted us out and things like that, and it was early, but we know what it feels like to lose. We know what it feels like this team. We've, we've witnessed that every year, but this team has been through that. And it doesn't, you know, I have people, can you win that many in a row and stuff? And that's not something our team really thinks about. We haven't looked at it as we've been on this long stretch. We've been looking at it more three and four. Uh, we thought we put ourselves in a hole and we didn't have much room. And we just wanted to get better, do as good as we can every single week. And uh, we still don't feel like we have. And we're, we're still trying to do that. But we're taking care of business and doing things the right way. And we still think we're going to keep getting better through this. So hopefully everyone will stay healthy this weekend, get some guys back and go into this playoffs and just keep acting like we've been in the playoffs for a long time. I mean, playoffs you can't lose. And so we just act like we've been in it for the last nine weeks. And, and we're kind of used to it. Why don't we keep it going? Three and four to 12 and four, and you want to get to 13 and four to be sure. So the Viking game kicks off in the morning. You'll have a little bit of a handle on how they're doing against Chicago. Philadelphia and the Giants kick off simultaneously. So how do you, you're two, you want to stay at least two, you'd like to get up to one. So as you process this and you're calling plays and you're coaching a game, how do you manage all this? If Minnesota loses and we see Phillies up 100 to zero. 100? If they're up a lot, 
then we know that, all right, this game isn't going to mean that much. Let's shut it down and get our guys ready. Um, personally, if I was a betting man, I think Minnesota is going to handle their business. Um, and then it all comes down to regardless of Philly, I don't want to go to the three seed. We, we earned this two seed and we got to make sure we stay here. So if Minnesota takes care of business, I don't think there's really anything else to think about. We got to make sure we win this game um, so we can stay at the two and hopefully we win week, the first week in the playoffs and whoever we play the next week, at least we know they're coming to us. Nine and oh, bro. Let's make it 10 and oh, bro. Thanks for it. your time, Kyle. Thank you, Good man. Luck.